Hi, I'm Ben with Teleport, and in this video, I'll be giving you a quick overview of how to set up Teleport for database access using self-hosted MongoDB. This video is gonna go over how you can install and configure Teleport for database access. I'm gonna go through some architecture diagrams, and I'm gonna show some few commands that you need and a few gotchas of when you configure Teleport for database access. So the steps here, we've talked about install and configure. Um, how to configure mutual TLS between Teleport and your MongoDB cluster. And then lastly, we'll go over how you connect to your MongoDB instance. This feature is in Teleport 7, and we support clusters down to 3.6. This video has been made using the latest version of MongoDB, which is uh, MongoDB 5, and it works all across. I'll have another video on setting up Mongo um, DB access for Atlas, which is Mongo's DB's official um, hosted solution, but this one's going to focus on running it yourself, whether it's the community edition or enterprise. So the first thing you need to do is install and configure Teleport. These instructions are quite well documented. I recommend following our quick start. Um, we have instructions here of how to configure and start Teleport. I'm going to kind of skip over that and sort of dive into a, a quick diagram of what we can do during this um, guide. So we have Teleport, which is going to be set up with an auth and proxy. This is in my AWS account. This could also be in a VPC, but I want to kind of show you that Teleport DB access will run, uh, will run Teleport in a certain mode, which runs as sort of a DB proxy. This lets you put the DB service very close to the DB cluster. And so it really limits the access of which containers can access which databases and increases your security. So in my case, I've deployed it within a um, FreeBC and it can connect to my MongoDB instance. I have this little dotted diagram here. This is to represent the certificates that you need um, that will deal with some of the connection. And I'll kind of like go over that in a bit more depth. And you see I have GitHub here. This is a optional SSO connector. I'm gonna be primarily using a local user with um, second factor setup. So we've talked about teleport configure and start. This would be this instance here. Next up, we talk about setting up the database service. When you create the database service, it is a, you download and install teleport, and then you can start it in a different kind of mode. This is the DB service that you start it as. So you do DB start, and then you also need to create a token. So this DB service will dial back to your root cluster the auth server, you will use the token, and then the name, protocol, and URI, these are all information that you will use to tell Teleport how to connect to your MongoDB instance. So in my case, I'm running mine on Teleport 7 Asteroid.Earth. That's where I've updated it. Name, this is whatever is useful for yourself. MongoDB protocol, this is the default MongoDB port. And um, labels, this is optional when you're setting it up, but this provides very powerful configuration options if you want to set up role-based access control or use our access requests in the future. Uh, example would be, you know, you can only limit certain teammates to access the production cluster, or they will open have to open an access request to make um, the request. So when you're setting the URI, um, you have a few options here, whether you're using a single connection or whether you're using a replica set. For this demo, I've just set up basic Mongo um, on one instance. You know, it's just kind of like working out of the box um, with probably all of the insecure defaults, but I've installed it in a VPC, so there's no public Mon MongoDB instance. Next up, we have creating a teleport user. I have a user here. Mine is called Ben Admin, but here we have the case of Alice. When you create the user Alice, you need to do a few things. You need to make sure that the DB user can access uh, the database name that you have and the database user, or if you're getting started to use the wildcard. Then you uh, use tcuddle to both get Alice and then update it. And then that should have configured the correct permissions for Alice. You can also do this using the UI um, here you see I've selected some DB users and um, DB names. I've had star, so that should be configured. 
Step two or three, configuring MongoDB. One thing you need to do is create a um, DB user. So let me log into my instance here. I have um, just Mongo kind of like set up out of the box. And here I have SSH'd into this. You could also use some scripts and some automation to configure these initial users, but I'm just sort of showing you for um, easy understanding and getting started. So what this is going to do is it's going to run a command, create a user. CN is important because this refers to the common name in the next 509 certificate. And then this is the name Alice. In my example, I'm going to um, also um, use Alice. And then we said we have, we've given her the role of read, write any database. So I'm in my cluster. You've seen it's okay. So now I can exit. The next thing you need to do is set up mutual TLS. This is used for authentication with self-hosted databases. And then you need to configure Teleport's certificate authority to be able to verify the clients. And so Teleport can connect securely. What I've done in my case is I have run tcuddle or sign locally, got these secrets and distributed them using AWS Secret Manager, and then I've downloaded them into my box. So what you do is you um, use tcuddle or sign, format MongoDB. Now for host, this is an important one. In my case, I've accessed this um, locally. And so um, for my cluster, this is localhost. When you're initially connecting, you might use the IP address. You can't use the IP address in this case, localhost because of the way in which we create the common names for certificate-based authentication. So just when you're setting this up, make sure that you use localhost and not the IP address. Out, this is just the name of the certificates, which will be um, a CAS and a CRT file. And then the TTL, which is um, 2,190 hours. You know, you can configure this longer and shorter based upon sort of your day to operations. We recommend shorter TTLs, but you need to have the automation in place to rotate them. Also, if you do rotate them, you have to make sure that you have to update all of the host certificate rotations too if you rotate Teleport's default CA. So I can show you actually what uh, mine looks like. I have a pretty basic uh, cloud config setup. Um, I won't go all over my Terraform setup, but you can see I've enabled MongoDB. I've done another thing. You can ignore this. This is for um, Atlas, but I download the secret manager. Um, which is the CRT, and I've written out to these two files. Then in my MongoD comp, um, I had this configured. And then I've also started Mongo and I started um, Teleport. There is one gotcha. Once you have enabled uh, X509 authentication, it will override any password based. This is why I've sort of logged in initially to create this Alice user. But once I've turned this on, I won't be able to do the same thing. I will only be able to access um, my MongoDB database using the X509 authentication method. So let's uh, edit MongoD. Okay, so you can see I just have it commented out here. I have my certificate file. This is the one that I've created from Teleport. And then I'm going to just stop. Uh, stop Mongo, just reboot it. And then you'll see if I try and use Mongo, like I can't access it. But I'll be able to access it using Teleport. So I'm going to come to my um, home terminal. I've logged in here. You can see I've logged in as um, Ben Admin. A couple of clusters here, but this is my current one. And then I can use uh, TSH DBLS. I have a range of clusters here, but we're focusing on uh, MongoDB. Okay, so you need to provide the database username. And so this username has to both be in your teleport role and the one in the database. 
And if you remember, we have decided to use Alice as the example user. So say connection information has been saved for the database. And so you can view that um, what would be the command for the native client. It's this relatively long string and you can see how we use um, TLS or SSL certificates to provide access for that period of time. This is sort of where Teleport becomes really powerful because this certificate for access is only valid for my TSH session, which will be a 10 hour cert. But I'm gonna use TSH um, DB connect oh okay so i'm not able to connect right now because i don't have mongodb on this machine let's go and, um, and install that okay so i followed the instructions from um, mongodb about how to install mongo locally you can see i've tried to set this up it has trouble connecting because it's just trying to go to the local host which hasn't been set up so let's try it again. Okay, so here we are. So you can see all I did was um, tshdb connect. It connected to the MongoDB instance on my cluster and it connected it to me. And uh, let's do help. Show DBs. Um, three databases that haven't been created yet because I just created this database. So uh, let's see, use admin and you can switch to DB admin. So there you go. This kind of ends the connecting to um, the MongoDB cluster. And because everything goes through teleport, if I come to my audit log here, you can see all of this query information. So the session has started as Alice on MongoDB. And you can see all of the queries that are executed. Um, and then you can take all this information, send it to a central SIAM for like alerting and reporting. Okay, let's keep going and see if I missed anything here. So we've had connect. I think we've covered this pretty well. Now the tip is you can connect to multiple databases at the same time. Uh, you just need to pick the dbls, db login, and you're sort of off to the races. Then at the end, if you wanted to remove any credentials, I can just do um, tshdb logout, brings me to the end. So if you have any questions or comments, please uh, join us in our Slack room or leave a comment on our GitHub discussions. Thanks for watching.